Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the 2024 Kia Telluride. This is the SX Prestige X Pro. Huge shout out to Caroline Auto Direct for providing this vehicle for me today. Definitely take a look at their website because they're always getting in some pretty cool, pretty much brand new inventory. That link is down in the description. So this Telluride is finished off in ebony black. It has an MSRP just over $55,000 and it's powered by a 3.8 liter V6 paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, pumping out 291 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. That power is sent through the all wheel drive system, propelling this 4,400 pound SUV from zero to 60 in around six and a half seconds. It has a top speed of 132 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 18.8 gallons. You'll expect to see around 18 miles per gallon in the city, 24 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 114.2 inches. Its overall length is 196.9. It has a width of 78.3, a height of 70 and a half inches, and its ground clearance has been increased to 8.4 inches. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Kia Telluride, let's start off with the Kia badge front and center. This is a new switch that Kia introduced a few years ago. I think it's a really nice design. All of the badges are finished off in brushed aluminum. And while it may not look like a Kia logo, we have K, I, and then the A off on the far right. I think it's a really cool, unique design and a twist for that Kia badge. Now for this model, everything is blacked out basically. The entire surround for the grill. This has a forward facing camera, plenty of cutouts provide a lot of cooling as well as in the middle and the very lower section. Now this also has LED headlights, DRLs and turn signals. Really cool squarish design for the headlight housings with the turn signals in the lower section. And then there are LED fog lights in the lower bumper. There's some plastic trim there, but there's also parking sensors too, which is nice to have. And then some black trim accents in the far corners. Now for the hood, really nice contoured lines in both indentions there, just to tie it in nicely. And as we work our way to the side, being the X Pro, this gets a set of matte black 18 inch wheels with a terrain contact tire, a little bit more aggressive. It's not crazy aggressive, of course, since it's not a off-roader, but with that all-wheel drive system, a little bit of a lift in those tires makes it a lot more versatile, of course. Now this has body colored side mirrors with the integrated turn signal, camera system, moonroof up top. The roof racks are gloss black too. And then there is some more plastic trim in the lower section. It's also on the fender arches too. So it ties in with the front area. And then we have a separation with some body colored trim in that lower section as well. And some brush trim, like a brushed gray that surrounds the window trim. It's a nice subtle touch to see. And there's also some contoured lines in that lower section. I think it gives it a really good look. And in back, this has a body colored spoiler. Third brake light is up top. Wiper blade is in the lower section. This does have LED taillights. Kia badge, of course, right in the middle of that power lift gate. And then the dual exit exhaust is over on that passenger side. Now this can also tow right around 5,500 pounds. Pretty adequate for this full size SUV. So you can definitely hook up some toys and some trailers and bring them along for the ride. Now this also has remote start. So if we lock it, flip the key around and hold this button on the back, we can fire this up. And then if you hold on that button again, you can shut it off if you need to. I also just noticed too, when you push on buttons, the IKEA logo will actually light up on the key fob. So that is pretty neat to see. From here, we can also hold the button or use the button located near the backup camera to open up the power lift gate, which is of course nice. And like I mentioned earlier, this is pretty much a full size SUV with the third row currently up at the moment. There's actually a decent amount of space. There's even room underneath the floor. Check out that amount of room to place in any smaller items that you may have. And then on the right side, there's a 12 volt. There's some tie down hooks too. And it looks like the third row is manual to fold down, which I think is a plus. A lot of luxury vehicles that are three row like this have automatic back seats, and this makes it so much easier to quickly put down and put back up. Now you can also fold down the second row if you have the headrest or the front seats out of the way. And with both of these second row folded down, you will see there's a lot more interior space, making this very practical for extra storage, or if you need extra people, you still have plenty of space. Now, like I mentioned earlier, with the manual third row, 
Makes it so easy to quickly do. And then up top, you can close and lock the vehicle. There's also an automatic control on that right side that you can program as needed. So let's work our way to the back seating area now. For the door panel, there's wood trim, brushed aluminum, even leather. This has the Harman Kardon sound system, a little bit of storage down below. And get this, the second row has heated and ventilated captain's chairs. Very cool to see for pretty much the fully loaded Kia, of course, but from a Kia, that's what you get for the second row. Even some other luxury brands don't offer that. This does have the manual adjusting sunshade, which is nice to have. And then as we work our way to the third row, you can just push this button on the top of the back of the rest there, and it will slide forwards. At five foot 10, it makes it easy to hop into the back. Now, this is a three person third row. Obviously the middle row or the middle seat is very tight. So it's mainly for smaller kids, of course. You have an armrest with cup holders, some auxiliaries too. But even at five foot 10, my head is just up against the headliner here. So if I had to be back here, I could. Maybe two people of my size, maybe a smaller kid in the middle. We have lights, uh, climate adjustments too, which is nice. You can be nice and comfortable. Leg room is equally as good. With the uh, uh, captain's chairs, you could have your feet in the middle, of course, just to hang out. But I have a good bit of space, so if I had a ride around town, my knees are, of course, up and almost into my chest. So it's a little bit short in the back, but it's doable. Plenty of light, too. So it's practical as a third row. And then we can easily slide this second row, lock it into place. We can move it farther backwards with the bar up front, of course. So it's just locked in that position right now. And just depending on the leg room you need for second or third row. You can easily do that. And then we have the lever on the side to recline this seat. Now there's storage pockets behind both front seats, cup holders, some more auxiliaries, plenty of leg room. And again, five foot 10, even with it reclined, this is where you wanna be super comfortable. We have a grab handle, more of the Alcantara. And then up top are all the climate adjustments for your backseat passengers. You have where you'd like the air to go, fan speed and temperature. Really nice layout with the dome lights just underneath that. Of course, these do have armrests too, just to give you a little bit more comfort, but look at the size of these windows with even how much light is provided into the second row. Now, working our way to the driver door panel, everything is the same. There's more storage in the lower section and then all of the window adjustments, side mirror adjustments, which are power folding, and then memory seating controls. And then for the automatic front seats, X-Pro is right in the middle. We have a nice design with all the stitching. And moving on to the steering wheel now, solid leather. There's gloss black accents, a lot of controls to go over. Let's fire this back up though, so we can go over the rest of those controls. So on this left side, there's mode for the radio, there's Bluetooth and voice commands, a favorites control, and then audio and tuning. On the right side, there's cruise control along with your steering assist. We even have the distance pacing and then a pages button too. That is going to utilize the center of the gauge cluster setup where miles per hour is on that left side along with your fuel. Right side is engine temperature and the tack. So if I use that pages button, we can scroll through some information, look at TPMS along with being able to monitor that all wheel drive system. There's the distance pacing. And then you have some other vitals that you can scroll through uh, just depending on what you would like to see for the day. Not a whole lot of information, but it's nice that you can quickly go through all of that at the same time too. Now on the left side, there's a dimmer switch, even a tow button. So you can utilize that if you have some heavy trailers, downhill assist control, you can open up the power lift gate, traction control, one air vent is just above that. And this even has the head up display. Currently it is showing miles per hour along with the speed limit sign. And then right in the middle, for this infotainment system, currently on this screen, there's the date and the time, as well as more of a calm screen with a slight view of the navigation map on that one end. Now underneath that, all the brushed aluminum toggles will allow you to go through that system. It is touch screen, of course, so you can swipe on it and go through other home settings too. So this is more of that calm screen, like I mentioned, and you have more icons like your map. So you can pull that up in full screen, really good graphics, of course. You have phone projection, which is how you can pair your phone. This even gets passenger talk. So this allows me to speak into the microphones right now, and everyone in the third row is going to hear that. So it's gonna be hard to convey right now by myself, but they'll be able to hear me without actually turning backwards. You have the rear climate adjustments, your normal climate adjustments, and then a few other icons 
that you can scroll through. Now underneath that, there are shortcuts to your map. You have your radio and media that of course you can pull up, seek and track. There's a favorites button, just like on the steering wheel. So you can set that up the way that you would like to. And then there's another setup to go into more of the displays and controls and even the screen layout. So just depending on what works best for you and how you'd like to have it set up. Really simple system to use, but it gives you a lot. Now there's more of that trim underneath going all the way to the passenger side. Air vents are just above those controls. There's power and volume and tuning, and then physical buttons for all the climate adjustments. So we have the dual zone, temperature on both sides, heated steering wheel control, fan speed, where you'd like the air to go. You can switch to the rear. That will pop up on the upper screen there if needed. And then a few other controls to easily go through that. Now these are heated and ventilated, just like the captain's chairs in the back. So those settings are on each side. And then underneath the gloss black compartment is the wireless charging pad, along with more auxiliaries and more storage on that right side. A Little bit of a storage bin in front of two cup holders. And then with the shifter, let's put it into reverse where we have a lot of angles with all of those cameras. So as you can tell right now, we have the reverse camera with a few different angles. We can even go to the full 360 view and easily swipe around to make sure that it is clear of uh, anything, any objects. If I put it into drive now, we can take a look at the forward facing camera that has a few angles. It even utilizes the side mirrors there. So it is a really nice system to have. You have some settings to go into and it gives you all those graphics that you need. Now you can also shift using plus and minus. So if you're towing, you're taking this on gravel or something and you need to hold the gear, you can do that. This also has a few different driving modes with a center locking diff, which is pretty cool. And by turning that, the gauge cluster will actually change. So let's start off in smart. There's sport, comfort, eco, and then even a snow mode. So just depending on how you're driving this for the day, neat to see that. And then there's the engine start stop, the auto hold. There's a shortcut to the camera system, so you can quickly pull that up. E-brake is in the middle, and then the parking sensors can be shut off too. Now, right in the middle, a little bit of storage space with some more auxiliary so you can charge electronics and then plenty of space in the glove box, of course, for additional info. Now, the sunroof has the manual adjusting sunshade. There's a sunglass holder up top along with dome lights and the controls for the sunroof itself. And this even gets the digital rear view mirror. So this is very beneficial, especially if you have third row passengers. It's going to be a little bit hard to see the visibility right now. But with that, you pretty much have no blind spots. And then a look over my right shoulder. It's just as open, but that camera system is a nice touch to have, especially for this price point. A lot of vehicles are starting to incorporate that into their vehicles. And then we have the separate control for the sunshade in the rear there for your backseat passengers. So setting off now in the 24 Kia Telluride. Like I mentioned earlier, with the SX Prestige, which is the top trim level, you add on the X-Pro and you get some other goodies, including the auto leveling rear suspension that I forgot to mention earlier. So when you have trailers on the back, that is definitely useful so you don't see this sagging down the road while you have a trailer on the back. Pretty cool technology, especially from a vehicle that you wouldn't really expect to tow. And of course, towing smaller trailers is different than heavy, you know, larger equipment, things like that. So it's pretty cool that it has that, even though it's not something that you're really going to tow a lot or anything that's too heavy. So top trim level, $55,000. It is pretty interesting and cool to see what comes in this Telluride for that price. We had a Kia Telluride last year for a full week. I was super impressed with it. Now, personally for me, just kind of off topic a little bit, I've been looking at BMW X5s and X7s. And what's really interesting is that for 55K in this brand new vehicle, you can get into a used X7. And my comparison to that is a BMW is a luxury brand. Kia, I wouldn't really say is at that luxury level, but then you hop behind the wheel of this and with an X7 being used, of course, maybe 30, 40,000 miles, you could get into it under 60K. So you're pretty much, you could cross shop something like that versus this Kia Telluride. And of course, new versus used, but it goes to show you that, I mean, we, we pretty much have similar technology and similar amounts of materials. Now there is, uh, I guess there's some plastic or there's leather covering the plastic on the dash, uh, but there's definitely 
plastic on the sides here. It feels like some kind of material over it. Maybe some of the materials and some of them, minor points, might not be just like some luxury brands. But even in this, you get heated and ventilated rear seats, plenty of storage behind the third row when it's up. I mean, for the money, I honestly can't really complain about anything with it. And just a mild acceleration, we're up to speed, plenty of horsepower and torque to get this up and moving. I'm thoroughly impressed with this Telluride. This is something that, if you're looking for a three-row vehicle and you want a brand new car versus getting something that is used, this is a great option to go with. I think it is perfect for what is offered and the price point. Comment down below, what do you think? Kia has definitely stepped up their game in the last several years. I think people, when they see a Kia or Hyundai, they still see them 10 years ago. And if you look at the present, you look at this 2024, they are miles ahead of where they used to be. So as a brand, they have come a long way and what they've been able to put in their vehicles and for the price point, they're definitely stuffing in a lot, which is nice. As far as driving it though, it's super comfortable. It feels like a luxury brand. It's very comfortable and quiet. It's so smooth to drive. There's no wind noise or road noise. You might hear the AC right now because it's so quiet from the outside. And we'll switch over to the manual setting now. Just above the speed limit sign, it indicates the gear you're in. Let's give it some gas. Now, of course, this is not a performance-oriented SUV by any means, but the shifts seem pretty smooth, pretty quick for using that gear shifter. And so, like I said earlier, if you need to use this for towing or you are off the pavement for whatever reason, maybe you're going camping or something, hiking, and you need to hold a gear just for a little bit better uh, gearing and even being able to lock the center locking differential, it's nice to have. So it's a, a good use if you actually have to use it. But now that we're behind the wheel for this Telluride, one thing that I did not show earlier is the fact that when you put your turn signal on, you have an additional camera for both sides. So it'll take up that gauge cluster there so you can see in your blind spot. You can also see if you're making a right-hand turn, if there is a curb in your way, it will guide you just to see what is around there. And of course, turning the steering wheel is gonna block it a little bit, but that is something that a lot of vehicles, I think, should incorporate. I believe Kia was the first to introduce that into their gauge cluster setup, and it's something that I feel like the rest of the industry is going to catch up and utilize because it's really cool. The amount of cameras on this vehicle, you really won't have any blind spots or any issues driving it. And even though it's a three row SUV, it's not as large as some others. Let's say a Cadillac Escalade, for example, is much bigger than this, Ford Expedition, even the shorter ones too. So this is a nice compact three row SUV if you need the third row, but it's also much tighter for parking lot situations and things like that. So if you need the space, but you don't want a jumbo SUV, this is a perfect option to go with. So that will wrap it up for the 2024 Kia Telluride SX Prestige X Pro. Once again, a huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this vehicle for me today. Check out their website, link down below. Give the video a huge thumbs up and consider smashing that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on our daily uploads. I will see you all in the next video.